Hi, this is Bobby of Vagabond Insider. This is day six of the no shampoo and Q-tip diet. And today, it's actually a pretty big surprise update. Yesterday, I was having lunch with one of my friends and she said that she saw dandruff in my hair. And I'm looking close. I don't know exactly what considers dandruff, but I do have white flakes now. And that's a normal process of this 30 day no shampoo. And this is actually the point when a lot of people will start washing their hair when this dandruff appears. But this dandruff, from what I read, is supposed to disappear. So I'm going to stick through it. It's not for everybody because maybe you have work and you're around a lot of people. I work from wherever I'm at. So my laptop, I'm working from my laptop right now. So it's not for everybody. So if you're trying it out right now and you have long hair, you may get dandruff. I think that's the normal experience. It goes away in a couple of days and the scalp just right now is adjusting to the no shampoo because before it had the shampoo products to pull out the different oils and the different nutrients in your hair, which I mean that your body adjusted to that and dandruff didn't appear. I don't know the exact cause of dandruff. I think it's like something about your scalp. Maybe whatever itchiness is also from it as well. And that if you had those problems before you started it, those will go away within 30 days. I have a feeling that these, this dandruff or the itchiness that I do have right now will go away within a couple of days. You'll find out. Just keep up to date with the videos. And for the Q-tips, uh, the earwax. It's about the same as any other day, but it feels to me like after a shower, I don't, I don't really need to clean it. Like before, every time I took a shower, I, I felt like I had to clean it with a Q-tip, and if I didn't, it felt really bad all day, and the stuff would, you know, leak out. Right now, that's no problem. So pretty much that's the update. Just beware of today. This is like a few days before the hump. I'm gonna talk more about it later. But this concept developed by Eben Pagan called, let's see, Habit Gravity Escape Velocity. So the example is, imagine a spaceship. When you have a spaceship, most of the fuel is burned before it even gets out of gravity's atmosphere. And so that's why it has like huge rockets, and that's where most of the fuel is at. And I think if, Eben says like it flies on 10% of its fuel. So it, the rockets boost up at um, just amazing, you know, if you've ever seen one, it's amazing. There's just tons and tons of just fuel being burned and like fire or whatever being shut out of the, the rockets. And then once it gets into a certain point, those fall off. And then it uses whatever fuel reserves are left back on that little spaceship, which is a lot less than what was burned to even get out of that. So imagine habits like that as well. You're going to, go against gravity it's just gonna you know you gotta put all of your energy to resist the gravity in the very beginning and that's exactly what i'm doing right now i feel like i do want to wash my hair because i don't like i don't like having dandruff or oily hair the way i do now and i didn't mention that but the hair is actually like a lot oilier now so i don't like that but remember habit gravity so i'm about to reach the point where I think in a couple of days I'm going to just be cruising because that's when it happens to a spaceship. The spaceship starts cruising once you get out of gravity at a certain point. It just starts cruising. And that's how everything is. So you can use it with working out. You can do it with eating well. Just imagine that. Eating well, it's about the sixth day or so when most people just go, oh, I really want in and out Burger. Oh, or McDonald's or KFC if you're in Japan. So just... Stick through with it, and I'll talk more about the habit stuff, but it's it's something that, you know, it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be. And for you, too, if you're on day three or day four, it seems pretty easy then, but, you know, it's going to take a little more time. And there's even more about habits. There's 10 days, 20 days, and 30 days. 10 days of, like, hell of your body saying, no, I don't want this to be done, and uh, 10 days of resistance, and another 10 days of, getting into it and then you're like oh okay this feels really good so just keep that habit gravity escape velocity in mind so any habit you're taking up right now right now I'm taking up so many habits it's probably too many I'm taking up eating well taking up the shampoo the q-tips working out correctly morning rituals 
and drinking water before every meal, taking supplements and everything at the right times, taking diet pill, not a diet, but a, a, a digestion pill with every meal, which helps my body digest. So I'm doing a lot. And some people say that it's a bad idea. You're supposed to do one habit every 30 days, 12 months, you get 12 new habits. I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. I think for me, with all the practice I've had of habits, it's a little different. It's not the same for everybody, though. And I made an assumption that it was as easy as deciding to do it. But I realized that our human instincts and our body and our mind, our subconscious is stronger than we think. And I know my subconscious is strong, but I'm trying to feed it and I'm trying to awaken. So, all right. That's again, this is day five, Vagabond Saturday. That's my little rant about whatever, about habits and stuff. And have a good day.